Hello everybody, I'm Alexander Williamson and today I want to talk about something that I've noticed about fish YouTube channels, aquarium YouTube channels. I'm really wanting your help. I want to know how how us as creators, how we can stop this this basic car crash that is just continuing to pile up as cars pile in on one after another after another and nobody hits the brakes and we just end up with a 30 million car pile up until the hobby is just something unrecognizable on the internet. We have a major problem in the hobby and it's not just a problem with the content but it's also a problem with the consumption of the content I think as well. So I'm going to have to work on that. And if you agree with what I'm about to say in this video, maybe you have some input on how you can respond, how others can respond, and how we can kind of break this chain, break this unhealthy relationship that I see just getting more and more ingrained into our hobby. So if you break down the basic videos about fish on YouTube. If you break down the basic videos on YouTube almost these days, you basically have a spectacle video, which can take the form of a short, or you can draw it out like Mr. Beast giving away, you know, a thousand cars or a million dollars or whatever he's doing this week. And those can have real change and real impetus for things that are good to happen in the world. And I think that could be true in our hobby too. But this is the kind of video that is, you know, 500 pound stingray found in the Mekong River Delta, freshwater stingray, pulled out of the water. And somebody has an incredible clip of these people catching it. And inevitably it gets 40 million views, right? And so everybody who's making videos is thinking, how can I cash in on that? So you've got the reactions and things, but they're really still in that first category. They're fueling off the spectacle. This first category I want to call spectacle videos. And they're videos that they can be very short, but they are something that makes you go, hmm, haven't seen that before, or makes you kind of wonder about things a little bit. And then there is the second type of video, which is you already have the idea when you get to your phone or your computer and you say, I need to know how to do this. Maybe, maybe you were inspired by a spectacle of some sort somewhere in your life or in a video and you're thinking, I got to learn how to have a tank that's that full of plants where six different species of fish are all breeding in there successfully or I want to learn to keep a filterless tank, or I want to learn to keep a high-tech tank with CO2 and two different filters, whatever it may be. These are the videos that I think the internet originally in people's minds years ago was thought to be the perfect answer for. It would be a repository of free information for everyone. And of course, there's right and wrong ways to do things. And I think one of the biggest problems with these videos is they don't have that awe. They don't have that wow factor most of the time. And sometimes when they do, if it's like building an aquascape or creating some sort of ginormous fish tank, there's financial limitations, there's time limitations, space, and also just the feeling that if you go and try to do it, ultimately at the end of the day, when you step back and look at what you accomplished, it doesn't match up to what these polished and well uh, produced channels are showing you. It's not going to look like an ADA aquascape, you know, award winning tank, especially on your first try, but that can lead to frustration as well. But beyond that, I think a lot of times people want to learn. They want to figure out which video in the type two video to go look for, but they don't know how to vet the information. And this is something that honestly I found the most useful part of college was that we were taught how to 
look at documents essentially and say, was this someone who was there? Were they reliable? Did they have a bias? And how many other people agree with them? And the same with science. And science is all subject to change as well. But where is the majority of the consensus? And having reliable sites, places like fish base, wherever it may be that you go to that you feel is trustworthy, ultimately you have to know with your gut and your logic where those places are going to be, where the experienced people are going to be, where the people with the info you want will be. And if you go too far out, you end up on videos that are basically bordering on conspiratorial, it's big fish doing this and that. And all of this is a distraction from why we are here. And so many of us fish tube creators or YouTube creators that have an aquarium based channel, essentially, we're here because we want to share something with you. And that is the wonder and the love of fish keeping. But I also see people that have been at the hobby for 15, 20 years, and they're just defeated. And they feel like, you know, they found a community online, they found a community at their local club, wherever it may be. And there's something that just all of a sudden lets them down. And no longer are they finding what they used to get out of the hobby. Now, for me personally, this hobby is beyond words in the power that it has provided me. Ever since I was a little kid, I have loved nature. I've wanted to be in nature, but I've had health problems. I've had all sorts of allergies and autoimmune problems and lupus and all sorts of other issues that I don't need to get into now, but it's limited me from being able to go to the Amazon and see what's going on there. But thinking that I could recreate a slice of it, that inspires awe and wonder to me. And it's not just in a feed that I'm scrolling up or down or left or right. Or It is something that every day I come to and I have some quiet time to meditate and reflect. And I look at my aquariums and I look at the processes of different fish. I keep new fish. I keep fish that I've kept for 25 years and I see new behavior and it makes me wonder, well, why, why is that behavior happening? And that's what inspired this entire channel that I have here. But I just see this trend of analytics, people with channels, they get to a certain point and people want to make a living. I want to make a living doing this. I want to spend my time researching and sharing my excitement and wonder with the hobby and building a community within my channel. And several channels have built great communities. Wherever it may be, uh, it doesn't matter. It's all great when it's a healthy community that's being positive and, and lifting one another up. But, you know, these clips that are inspiring the shock and awe or the wow, the whole watch me throw a stake into a piranha tank, watch me get go to Petco and buy out every single betta that's in a little cup and rescue them all. One, the back end of that, it's not pretty, trust me. But two, like what is this furthering and what does this have to do with your hobby at home? And maybe it's an escapism but to me, these are the things that, yeah, they make for a great video, but everybody's got to one-up one another. And where does it end? When is the shock and awe a shock and, uh, man, I don't know if I should be watching this. I don't know if I feel good supporting this. And likewise, on the videos of the other kind where it's, you know, this is an instructional video, sometimes they're just so dry and boring and it's such a big subject and you say, I don't know who to believe, that we need to be teaching one another the tools to vet sources, to understand the science, to decode different multiple disciplinaries of studying science, engineering, physics, biology, botany, whatever it may be, so that we can wrap our heads around this and together understand it, even if it's at a watered down level. And I don't know the answer because 
when you become a creator of a certain size, and it's honestly the size I'm at right now, you have to decide, am I going to spend all my time? Am I going to spend my whole day working on content and going places? Am I going to book trips, film stuff, buy expensive equipment? Are we going to have editors, producers, things like that? Are we going to have a team? And when you get to that point and you decide to do that, if you've chosen the route of the the spectator sport side of it, I don't think that's going to a healthy place. It's going to a place that's just one-upping until there's trouble. And unless it was raising money to preserve you know, wetlands or wildlife, I don't see where this uh, trend would... Uh, would get better, you know, and it's getting more and more clickbaity and more and more grating and frustrating on people who just want to get together and talk about how they kept fish. Now, for me, keeping fish literally saved my life. You know, my family and friends, they did too, that's for sure. 15 years ago, about January, I, uh, I needed to quit drinking at and uh and i have i did and um aquariums are a large part of what brought me that comfort that awe that wonder that inspiration that in enjoy nature daily that corey from aquarium co-ops always going on about we need to take that a step further we need to inspire curiosity daily a lot of people get into a set pattern when they're keeping fish and you see fish breeders that have this, you know, really slick system. People like, let's go off aquarium call up and not a lot of people watch that channel, but like master breeder Dean, who's also in my fish club, his fish room, immaculate. He's got a system, you know, and clearly he has motivations, loving the fish. And, um, I mean, we all have different motivations. Some it's for relaxation. Some it's to bring some life and nature into the house. Just kind of curious, want some more plants. To others though, you know, war vets, to people with chronic pain, people with end stage fatal diseases. I hear from all of you. And I know the power of not just nature, but it is the unknown it is the putting the puzzle pieces together and on my channel that's what i want to do is i want to take that column a of the wonder and awe and the this is how you do it and i want to put the breadcrumbs out there but i want you guys to complete the journey and i don't know exactly how to do that i'm being really vulnerable and just putting that out there because I mean, it doesn't sound good when I say, I don't know what I'm doing with this channel. And that's essentially what I'm saying. I, I feel like being excited about things and trying to give you guys episodes like the 12 best resources for your, uh, information on fish. If you need to do research, hopefully those things help. That's a starting point, but I don't know if it's just lost in the echo chamber of the internet. And I really want my community, other communities of fish keepers, I want them to be places where we can encourage each other to find those little daily quote unquote miracles, those little things that make us love fish keeping, that make us love life, that make us love to learn and feel excited about those processes. When you have a planted tank and you do everything right, you've got a strong light and before you didn't, all of a sudden it starts bubbling and, and showing oxygen or CO2 and, and you realize this is how oxygen on earth between algae and forests and you know plants, this is how we're breathing. <sighs> That's incredible. What other things are in there? You know, what else is going on in there? And every day you can find something new. Even if you kept the same fish the same way, I want to try to bridge the gap between these two subjects. Now, some people do, and they don't try to make that, that spectacle something that's so out there that it's unachievable. 
They try to make it like a, a how to make a, a Wallstead tank on KG Tropical. Lisa and Diana Wallstead did a Wallstead build, which was awesome. Uh, I love that. And that's something that hopefully inspires some people. But for the people who have been in the hobby a long time, what is it that gets you guys, you gals, feeling excited and 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 pumped up because if you lose that if you lose that curiosity if you lose that drive to go and stare at your tanks for a while each day soon your priorities your finances your time everything else the equation gets harder and harder to keep equalized and the hobby will fall eventually and I just can't help but think that the way we're going about things on YouTube and especially on TikTok in these shorter forms is barreling towards this point where people are just kind of fed up with the outside of fish keeping and they turn inward and that's not always a sustainable way to get new species, to get tips, to learn, to find good information. And I just want to try to figure out, with your help, what we can do to encourage one another to keep on this journey on our own, but also to have a worthwhile and valuable addition to education, to those spectacle videos that are interesting. They are entertaining. I do scroll through them, of course. And how do we take a step back and ratchet down the clickbait and the sensationalism and the drama and the, the butting heads that I think is just a subconscious thing a lot of times because who cares how you keep fish as long as they're healthy and happy. It's absurd to be fighting over the things that people fight about in this hobby and minutia and that's inevitable in a lot of things but let me know in the comments and thanks for sticking with me. It was just something I, I had to get off my chest and that I want to see fixed in this hobby because it means so much to me, as do all of you. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.